Hello and welcome to Marketing Without the Marketing. Today's episode is called Creating Content as a Business Asset, and I've been talking about this concept a lot over some recent episodes, that you need to go into creating content with a plan, and otherwise, it's just a waste of time, right? You'll be expending a lot of effort for not much in the way of results. And businesses come to me all the time saying, blogging didn't work for me. Social media didn't work for me, but it's not what you did. It's how you did it. And it's such an important concept, this creating content as a business asset. I did an entire episode on this way back in episode 10, and it's been one of my most popular episodes. So I thought I'd go back to this today, which is, well, a great example of reusing content, right? So that's why I didn't have the little intro at the very beginning, because I'm going to present to you here episode 10, in full, starting right now. Hi, this is Michael Bosey. Welcome to this week's episode of Marketing Without the Marketing. Uh, Today, I would like to talk about content as an asset. I tend to think of marketing in the traditional sense, sort of 20th century broadcast marketing or advertising as more of a cost, where I think of content strategy as more of an asset. And let let me explain this. I think of marketing as a cost mostly because it's not as renewable, right? You run a campaign, see what happens, you know, and then the effect diminishes pretty quickly. You get this really, you know, this big spike in awareness if uh, uh, if it's a successful campaign, but then you're going to get this sharp decay. And it's not to say that you're not going to be using your content over and over again, uh, you know, in, in, in traditional marketing. Of course, you know, some of that happens, but it just feels like it has, it has less of a shelf life. Now, in content strategy, this is why I say having a strategy is really important when you start out, right? Because if you build this in a clever way, you can actually be getting really a lot of uses out of one set of content. And if you have a strategy out front, you can actually see that. You can actually plan for this so that, you know, if you see uses down the road, it may actually affect how you produce the content in the first place, right? And I always say, you know, one thing about a content strategy, you know, if you're going to, one of your goals is to make it really efficient, you never want to produce a set of content for one purpose only. You want to afford yourself the ability to repurpose it, reuse it, and do that as much as you possibly can. Now, of course, the context is going to differ. We know that, right? So something that you're going to post on a blog, for instance, is going to be different from a Facebook post versus other social channels. Uh, versus a white paper or a campaign or a landing page or whatever. And of course, you're going to have to edit your content for those specific reuses, those specific contexts. But you can, you can have a well of content that you can use over and over again, which is what I mean by renewable. Now, of course, you know this if you've ever used a brand message, a slogan, a tagline, right? The idea of it is, okay, let's get that settled, and then we're going to hammer on that. We're going to use it over and over again in marketing pieces, websites, social profiles, landing pages, advertisements, whatever. Well, the cool thing is that the same thing goes for longer pieces as well. So think of like medium form content, uh, like a blog or longer pieces, uh, it might be sort of an explainer video that, that could be medium size too, or it could be a white paper or something that's a little bit longer. But let's take a blog post, for instance. I mean, really, if you think about it, a blog is just, it's a way for you to get closer to your customers. Uh, it's really just sort of a story or a storified or narrative version of you or your business. It's meant to be more personal, right? To dig deeper into a topic or an issue, uh, to show a different side of your business, right? It's different than your sort of static site copy. And this right here is why when folks are like, hey, what am I going to write? You know, I should start a blog. Okay, I'm going to do it. But what should I, you know, where should I start? Uh, I always say, hey, look, if you don't know where to start, just uh, take your Uh, Three, four, five, six most common customer questions, the ones you get over and over and over again. I mean, those are a great place to start when you're constructing a blog, right? 
Because think about it. One, it's your best chance to answer those those most common questions that you get. Uh, to do it, one, in a more uh, intimate, personal way. But then also, think about this. You get, uh, it's sort of your best statement of that question. So you don't have to sort of struggle over it. You struggle over it once and then you reuse it over and over again. The cool thing is, of course, with the blog is you don't have to have someone hunt around for it on your site or draw them to a page on, 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 uh, on your general website. You have this piece, this great statement in answer to a customer question accessible via one click, one link. So next time you get that question, uh, then bam, you can answer it with one link. Oh, here, I've written a piece on this. Put a link in the email, and there you go. And I often recommend that you actually use a short link for that so it's very human readable, so it doesn't have to be a long link. So uh, use a service like Bitly, for instance. That's the, the one that I use and probably the most common, but there are other services as well. And just come up with a link there that you can put you know, your email signature or, like I said, just drop it into an email when you're actually answering a customer question. You don't have to stumble over it. You don't have to spend all this time writing it. You've already done it once and you're going to use it over and over again. I mean, it's amazing, right? Okay, now aside from answering common customer questions, the other thing that you'd be thinking about with your blog post is that it can be reused in a number of different ways, right? So you could, for instance, refactor it into a number of social posts, uh, so for instance, I do this all the time, take my blog post, pull out a half dozen quotes, uh, or things that I think might be compelling or inspiring or whatever, send them out via Twitter or, uh, other social channels with a link back to the, to the blog. Uh, it could also be repurposed into an email campaign, refactored into a landing page, uh, you know, serve as the copy for that. So there's many different uses that you could get into this. Uh, and I call that sort of going downstream, uh, right? Take your sort of medium form content and put it into, uh, you know, uh, smaller pieces. But you can also go upstream too and go from blog to sort of ebook or full book length work, you know, that could, uh, you know, your blog could serve as the first draft towards that. Uh, so there's just so much that you could do if you start out with a strategy. Now, of course, this is going to be different for every business. Every audience is different. And of course, the way that you interact with them is uniquely your own. And that's why there's not really a, you know, this one size fits all strategy. Um, and so you really got to learn this for, for yourself, uh, you know, in your relationship with your audience. But as I always say, in order to be successful, you really do have to measure what you're doing. You do have to treat it like an experiment because really that's what it is. Uh, I've said this before, but you you really won't know your audience and you won't know what your content strategy should be, even though you start with you know hypotheses, but you won't really know about it until you start introducing stimuli into your market, right? Start with that set of assumptions, write a piece of content, push it out there, and then see what happens. And of course, it's going to take a lot more time than just your first piece. Sometimes it takes years to get your content to start gaining traction. I hope that's not the case for you. But, you know, you got to expect it to take uh, longer than sort of purchasing access uh, to scarce channels for an advertisement, this sort of awareness campaign. But you know what? The good news is that if you're thinking like uh, of this like it's an experiment, it should really only take a few pieces uh, to really start to understand what your audience responds to. I mean, you'll start getting a sense of that if you're able to measure this. And then, I mean, right after just a few pieces, you can start adjusting in real time so that you're really, you know, you're better serving your audience. And let's be clear, if you're not serving your audience, helping them solve a real problem, helping them get past an issue, then your content strategy is just not going to take off. So, Hope that you find that to be sort of orienting or helpful or even inspiring. Uh, I'm glad that you're following this podcast. Uh, please uh, give me a rating on, on iTunes if you would. I mean, wow, I'd really appreciate that. That does wonders for folks who are podcasting. Um, so anyway, as always, really appreciate you listening. Thanks so much. Uh, and we'll see you next time.